Well, hello, Tim Pilbeam. We're live at the British Shooting Show 2020, and we're going to talk about moose. Now, I've just pressed the play button for people that are not watching this, uh, but are listening to it. So there's our, what I think is one of my favourite films from last year, which was us in northern Sweden uh, hunting moose with Aimpoint and Pelter, who do the hearing protection. So, yeah, we just want to talk about it and a bit of it behind the scenes about what went on and the, um, the efforts we went to and the different sort of um, issues we had and what a fantastic time we had as well. So Tim, you'd never shot moose before, I'd never filmed moose, oh no, that's a lie, I had filmed t um, Kai on moose in Finland, but what were your expectations? I think with moose hunting, we always hear these wonderful stories, these massive beasts roaming around in, in the countryside in Sweden and, and Scandinavia, but you always hear stories that actually is, is, they're quite hard to get. It takes many, many moose hunts to, to find these, these elusive animals. And I think, to me, my expectations were quite low. Because they... <laughs> <laughs> Is that just in general? <laughs> for the, for the filming, you, yes, for the food, yeah, for the right, com yeah, that's company. Right, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so they, they were, in some ways, quite... Like, but it's just, it, it's, I've never done it before. So to actually be able to do it um, in, 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 in what I feel is actually one of the most beautiful mountain ranges or areas of, of Scandinavia is actually, we've got to have a go, haven't we? So, uh, Had you been to that part of Sweden before? I've actually skied up there. Yes, I was skiing there initially two, three years because previously. You, so yes. your friend Matt Marples yes. lives there now. So we weren't far from Matt, bizarrely, were we? That's right. So we were, we were basically, we, we flew up to um, in, uh, Ustersund and we were actually hunting around, around Ore, which is a ski resort. So, and, and I skied there with Matt three years previously. So isn't that amazing? <laughs> but the one thing that probably sold it to all of us was the fact that we were going to get a chance to go in a helicopter. Yes. It that was, was special. That's, was. to be honest, yeah. I mean, visually, for me to, to, to have to film it and put GoPros on it and everything else, that was what made it for me. It was that planes, trays and automobiles, the fact that we had a helicopter to play well, with. Well, there is actually a story behind this because I was meant to be on holiday <laughs> and, and uh, you offered me this trip to say, can you go? I said, well, I can't because I can't cancel yet another holiday in my wife. And he said, there's helicopters. <laughs> so therefore, that was really, really worth the aggravation. So even, had, even Heather went, yeah, okay. Yeah, so she said, yeah, come on, you got it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a chance in a lifetime experience. I know most people don't go hunting in helicopters, but we've got to do it, haven't we? So I thought it was a definitely a yes. But you have to explain the point. What was the point of the helicopter? Well, we were covering massive grounds. And, then, and where we were hunting in this, um, I can't remember what the size of this state was. It was 15,000 hectares. But within this um, hunting ground, there were no roads. So therefore, to get to the top of the mountain, um, how do you do it? If we were to walk, it would take hours and hours and hours. So Days. the only way to the top is in a wally copter. Yeah. So it's fantastic. So yeah, uh, yeah. so that's, that's the main reason. I, I think that obviously most people either walk in or they will have tracks into the, into the, hunt, the, into the, into the land. But this particular place, there's no tracks. So helicopters are vital for them. And in the opening line, we do say that the King of Sweden had actually hunted there the week before. So we were in good company, weren't we? We were in very good company. We were very well looked up, a beautiful hunting lodge as well. Um, and the food was fantastic. So once again, you know. <laughs> we're very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> hunting trips with field sports doesn't normally happen this way. But this was a bit special, actually. No, so. we've, we've pretty much stayed in the same bed, hasn't we? So yeah, and we both snore. Shot so going into that. <laughs> but yeah, so this, this was very, very different. But the actual, the terrain, the dogs, it's working with dogs, which we don't obviously tend, we obviously in the game field, but when it's, you know, that is a completely different type of hunting. They have their different breeds for, for different styles of, of moose hunting, but they were beautiful, weren't they? And they did their job. But then for the, the main problem was that our dog was called Stay. So immediately we've got confusion. <laughs> it's like, Stay go, Stay wait. I, I think. Um, with, with these dogs, as we're used to in the UK working with dogs and they'll be working within 100 metres maximum. Yeah. These yeah. dogs were kilometres away. Yeah. So, um, so therefore, nowadays with the technology is that, that you know, the dogs had, had a GPS on them. Um, obviously, our handler had a GPS unit. And so they, had, they, they can know, know exactly where these, these dogs are. So they, they were literally running two or three kilometres ahead of us trying to find scent. And that's amazing, isn't it, really? Yeah. And it, so there's that technology. Oh, I, I've got no idea how they did it years ago. I think they lost a lot of dogs. <laughs> but, you know, there, there were several teams. I think there were three teams out um, hunting. And uh, what was really interesting is that with this technology, we all knew where we, where we were. Yeah, so that's there's a, safe, there's a safety yeah, issue yeah, yeah, there, there as is, well. Yeah. 
Yeah, we will get a, uh, a, a message on the on the dog, which is about four kilometres beast towards your area. Yeah, yeah. Look out, it's yeah. coming through. Yeah. And we look on the screen. Yeah. No, that was it. Yeah. But he's seen, so they've got the. Understanding what was happening because we knew that there was a an RTA and a moose had been hit, and then they pursued that moose, which potentially could have come towards us. But hearing about that and being able to sort of be earwig into that whole scenario, and then to see it unfold when Jason actually provides me with the footage, you know, we've got those two different stories. But then we've got your relief and the, obviously the the uh, the hunt manager's relief as well when we know that the animal's been taken care of. That was quite that was a I weird, think it was, weird yeah. event, wasn't it? I, really? I think the RTA was a real life. You know, whatever one about is it actually happened you know oh god this has happened a beast being hit the the person the the driver in the car was concerned phone calls were made yes let's do something about it and then the reaction was yep yeah, let's go and find it you know so so for that film crew um we ended to go and do that i think that was actually really powerful stuff because you know we were there they were there for a reason let's do it okay where is it let's find it and they had to find it as well yeah you know and so. it was successful which is really yeah really really helpful but it's um you know the us on that first day, the weather was atrocious, wasn't it? It was so wet. It was filthy. Um, well, it was that bad, the helicopter couldn't run. No, I know. Oh, so disappointed. <laughs> I about that. Yeah, the first day Lovely, gleaming helicopter, million pound <laughs> helicopter, and I was like, can't use it. So we had to go you know, walk. Ah, anyway, um, <clears throat> but no, it was. It was a bad day, very windy. The, the, there was rain, the, the, uh, the clouds had come down, so that's why the helicopter couldn't run. So therefore, we just went off walking. And it was just one of those days where we, we probably knew... But yeah, actually, I know. It's we just we a knew nice walk in the Swedish countryside, <laughs> was, basically, wasn't it? You know, but, but this is it. And the pressure, though. Suddenly, we've lost that day. We know we're not going to get in the helicopter. So I'm coming back with. I know Jason's got something. I've got some chat with you. I've got some pretty sort of. Oh, pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty shots of me. Pretty shots of you. Well, just okay, some slow you're, you're blowing. You're blowing the steam off the coffee. Oh yes, thank very, you. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. was almost like a um, Turkish delight moment <laughs> or a flake. It's flake ad. It was flake ad, right, yes. level. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, I've got nothing to work with, really. There's no story for me. Story Jason, life, really. Jason's, <laughs> Jason's got something, but I've got nothing. Uh, but obviously, you're the Brit out there, as opposed to Jens, who's, who shoots moose yes. all the time. Yeah. Whereas you, you know, I wanted that emotion when you see and hopefully get your first but, moose. But that's part of what we do in some ways, is, is, is we got no idea. We're dealing with nature. Totally. We're dealing with a totally um, an that unusual cameraman wild. as well, but uh, but we have got no idea what's going to unfold. We are, you know, so therefore we'd go out there, and we were, we've had situations where literally we've been we had a three day trip, <laughs> and two of the days we drew blanks. <laughs> it's like we need need to find something pretty quickly. So yeah. uh, we we're used to that. Yeah, we are. But I think with moose, you do never re re know never know what's going to happen anyway because it's such a massive area. We're covering. You know, hundreds of kilometres, aren't we? Really? Yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah. So that's always a, that's always a problem we have is that, you know, first day drawing blank. If, it, if it's first day, it's like pressure's off, but it's pressure's back on us, wasn't it? But then also sometimes it happens too quickly, and yeah. we we haven't earned it, and that's so important for you, for me, for everybody that we work with. It's just suddenly we've got an opportunity. It's like, and we pass them by, don't we? We pass them by because it's a sense of we yeah. just really haven't put the, mi the miles in I, I feel quite strongly about that it's, yes I think you've got to earn it in some ways for, for want of a better um, phrase um, that's all part of it you know if it's laid on the plate for you it doesn't feel right so is that feeling you've got to put a bit of hard work into it for a start perhaps anyway so that's how I feel about it Yeah, we wasn't now. I remember that um, the was barking and, and, and the, the, the move was held up.
satisfaction with you shooting a moose that's a that's kilometre right, away. Yes. So, so okay, well we go. So yes, so we were drawn into this. So therefore, it was it was held up. We walked um, towards it, and you know he's like yeah yeah yeah. Then suddenly, I think as soon as I saw the outline of the beast, we probably would say 50 yards for a start. But as soon as you see that, suddenly your my pulse started racing. And thought wow, this is the this is it. This is pretty this good. is really really it. And, he, and the dog was barking away, and this, this I mean, you just see this greyish thing behind these trees. But we got really close, didn't we? And, and for whatever reason it was, um, oh, the beast actually had a youngster with it, didn't he? Had a calf didn't with it. Didn't he say, though, that, they, that the cow will sometimes just expel the youngster away from the. Yes. So that, that was another reason why. Not the first one, perhaps, but this, yeah, the one with it was a youngster, wasn't it? A very, very small yeah, yeah, one, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're all right, yeah, there's sometimes they push them away. And, and the, the mum would just, just stay there. But yeah, for whatever reason, you know, we got very close, didn't we? Yeah. And the other thing is, you've got these trees in the way. <clears throat> so therefore, you want to take a shot. Well, I mean, in this situation, I didn't actually see enough of the beast to take the shot, but you've got these big, big trees in the way. And you just it's slightly come, ooh, what do I do? You know, so, uh, but unfortunately, we didn't get that. And we got within, what, 15 metres, 20 metres? Yeah. It was quite close, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? No, it's exhilarating. Again, it's about the wildlife. And I think when, a, when I'm doing a piece, if I've got wildlife shots, that make that, that I can still oh. deliver a piece. If, yeah. if we didn't knock anything <laughs> down, that's fine as long as I've got wildlife and a sense yeah. of wildlife. Because I think the people that watch the show are quite happy to see that. It's not all about the it's end not all result about because it yeah. is part of the journey, which is what hopefully we deliver. But um, as it is, we did knock something over, mm. and we haven't even talked about <coughs> your training. I mean, the thing is, you. We'd done that whole aim point training before we got there. Yes. So your way of shooting had changed anyway, hadn't it? So you've yes. never done the red dot sight. That's right. Well, training. I mean, the, basically, the, 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 the whole discipline of actually shooting game on the run. It's moving yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. And that's basically what the Swedish do. Um, and so therefore, we spent, um, I think, about a day with aim point, red dot sight. And um, enigmatic, and Eric. Yeah, indeed, yes, that's right. And um, basically, we went, I went through a training program with... with um, um, Jason and Jake, with Jason, and uh, yeah, so we were trained how to uh, shoot a moving target. And what's, what are the three key words? Oh gosh, uh, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> what are they? What are they? Good job, there's not a moose here. Yeah, that's too. right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what it is actually. Focus. Focus. No contact. Contact. Focus. Focus. Kill. <laughs> yes. So the contact. They the so very quickly. What the concept is actually. Both eyes open is the most single thing. But contact is actually acquiring, seeing the beast. And then basically the, what was I find the most fascinating thing is is, is the focus is actually you, you actually put the red dot on the kill zone of the animal, but actually you do not study the red dot. You actually, you actually you study... Ignore the dot, don't you? Yeah, you ignore the dots. You study the area where you want to shoot, and the actual red dot moves across. And as soon as it's in the area where you're studying, where you're actually focusing on, you pull the trigger. So you do, not, you do not actually follow the red dot. You actually just let it go to the area, then you pull the trigger. And that was completely alien to us. And I couldn't quite understand it for a start. I couldn't no. quite make my eyes do it. But then you got it. Then I got it. There there was, it was like a revelation, wasn't it? Was, it was, yeah. So you're just actually studying. Imagine a, a, a very large shoulder on a, on a moose. You study that area. It's probably a foot. The kill zone's a good, at least a foot. All you're doing is actually focusing your eyes on that kill zone. Where your red dot doesn't actually matter. And then the red dot moves across the beast. And as soon as that red dot touches that, that foot area, that area, that kill zone, you pull the trigger. There's no aiming involved whatsoever. You just pull the trigger. It is as simple as that. But us being English, we're used to kind of winding up our scope to 50 power and taking time and making sure we can see the, the, the hair on the animal, then we pull the trigger. No, at the end of the day, it's got, you've got a massive kill zone. Just get the, as long as your bullet lands in that kill zone, it's going to go down. As Eric said, so yeah, yeah, that's right. So that's what we did. So anyway, so when we actually, when we actually, had, was, it, was it our last outing? We saw actually saw the moose. Yeah, it was. Well, most, yeah. It so was, yeah, it yeah. was last chance saloon as normal, and uh, we went out and it, with the young guy with his new with his younger dog, um, healthier dog. One of the dogs was, 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 was a bit. So yeah. and stay was a bit, not so go. Was he? He was no, was. no. But yeah. um, but what were you doing when I when I spot when I. Uh, I spotted the moose. So it's interesting. You got when two, you having you a pee? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was, yes. Two, two hunters. One was having a pee, and the other one was just doing something else. On his else. phone, I think. It was on his phone, was it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. and then me, the, the only true hunter. <laughs> <laughs> you spotted, you actually, and you spotted this beast walking. It was in the wood, it was in the, um, in the, in the woodland, wasn't it? Mm. Three, four hundred metres away, and you spotted mm. it. Um, so I had it to was kind so of... It was so grey, though. I didn't think it was no. real. 
because it was so grey. I didn't expect it to be grey. I thought it was going to be brown. But for, for your, from your point of view, um, you had probably the ultimate film opportunity because the beast was actually in the in the woodlands. To follow but, it all through. But he actually followed it through from the woodlands. Because normally you shoot moose, and it moves, and it's in a deep, uh, heavy area. Yeah, 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 and yeah, you, you yeah, just don't yeah, see anything. Yeah, yeah. But actually, he kind of walked away out of the woodland into an open area. So it's good for me, but you've got more time to think. Yeah, I think oh, yeah. Worrying, so we, which is always, a, always, always a concern, that's right. So therefore, he kind of w walked in the open area. Then it, it, was, it was kind of behind these, these bushes. And uh, I'm trying to think who the, the guy was. He was saying, OK, fine, shoot, shoot, shoot in a minute. And you know, he was giving me a spot, which is probably a metre wide. And this animal was 130-odd metres away. And, and this, this animal was walking reasonably steadily. And he wanted me to shoot this animal in about a metre gap. And I thought, I can't do that. And, yeah, and, and then and you I, had Eric in your head. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah. So, but it was just the more the pressure actually, because it was it was towards the end of the in, in last day. And um, if you've missed uh, it, if I missed it, that would be in here. Yeah, that's right. So therefore, we wouldn't be here yeah, talking about is, it now, would this, we? This is the pressure on on us us. I don't think people realise that. Yeah, th th that's the thing is actually when you have the camera on you and everything else, and, and when you, it is last chance saloon, the, the pressure the, it, you have to blank it out. You have to blank it out because you can't think about that. And uh, so this, this beast was actually walking behind these trees and he told me to shoot it, I said no. <laughs> and also the angle he was is different to mine. Yeah. And fortunately, I think, oh my God, have I blown the only opportunity we've ever had to shoot a beast. Unfortunately, it went into a slightly more open area. I was able to turn, and then and, and, and suddenly that um, contact focus kill is suddenly, it just, I went into, into, I suppose, automatic. I knew exactly what to do. Um, I think I was quite surprised. Is, is the, the, it was actually quite a long way away. It's 130 metres what away. What calibre was it? I can't remember. It was 308. 308. So it's actually, most of these red dots, you know, they, they're very effective up to 60, 70 metres. You can shoot longer. But it's actually 130 metres away. So suddenly this red dot looked, you know, it was just, it was, it was just looked at, wow. That could be interesting. <laughs> but anyway, you know, training and experience, David, and you know, that's why I do it, is that actually all fortunately came to, it all worked very, very well. So, and uh, yeah, we, I made the shot and it felt good. And yeah. it felt yeah. good and, yeah. and there it was. It, was, it yeah. ran about 40, 50 metres. Um, yeah, it's just. But that's, that's my opportunity then to get the camera shoved right in your face. You haven't got the time to think about it. It's, it's that moment of, that moment only exists for 20, 30 seconds afterwards, and it's to get that reaction, yeah, get yeah. that raw emotion. You, you're talking to me, you're not talking to the camera, we're talking to an audience, you're talking to, because we've experienced anyway, so it's just as friends to say, oh my God. Yeah, well, my first, my first moose, you know. Yeah. In, in, in such stunning, beautiful, un, you know, it, you almost it felt wild, that, it? it was wild, yeah, and it almost felt that we were being the first people there. Yeah, it was. It was just like, it yeah, was, it was, it was yeah. just fantastic. So yeah. the whole build up over, th over three days, the whole thing, and actually find one and towards the end of, the end of our stay was just, it was epic, I suppose, in some ways, wasn't it? Yeah. It was no, just it was, wonderful. It, trying to sort of relay that sort of level of, there's so many different emotions, actually. What's that behind? No, no, it's oh, uh, you that's behind yeah. me. You're yeah, just, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you can see but it. It's, just, see it's it. relief because we've got the job done. You know, we've only, you know, there's a lot of money invested by Pelter and Aimpoint to actually make it all come together and work on it, you know, and make sure that you've got the right personnel there. You got all the right calibers. You got all the right kit, and um, and yeah. And when the opportunity arose, you took it, which is brilliant. And we have all those other near misses as well, which also build into the story. And it's all about the story ultimately. Isn't it? And if we get a climax, then then brilliant. But the extraction again, the guy coming down in the helicopter and manu I mean, where he initially manoeuvred that helicopter. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, we were guiding wow. him in. We thought, okay, we land over there in the open area, and he came in right where the beast was. And there was probably what I think it's about two meters either side of his rotor blades. It's as, he, as, he just, as he just dropped down. Because it's quite a graphic image. I, I, so I put the GoPro on the leg of the moose, but actually that was the second. It, we, we picked it up and dropped it and then picked it back up again. So there was a bit of fudging there, but it was purely because it was the ease of, of manoeuvring the, the animal as well, wasn't yes, it? But yeah. I said, listen, if he can drop it down again, I'd love to put the GoPro on it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not sure people appreciate that last shot, but it just it looks weird. Again, it doesn't look right. It just looks like it's almost like superimposed, isn't it? But, but no, it, you know, when you get that sort of elation at the end um, and it suddenly brings everything together and all the all those sort of preambles that we've done that sometimes get absolutely been because you just don't need them because the story didn't evolve the way you wanted it to but yeah. that then we can I can think okay I didn't waste I didn't meet yeah. waste Monday I didn't waste Tuesday and I certainly didn't waste Wednesday you know but that was it we were all gone there's no sort of saying can we, can we have another go tomorrow 
That was doesn't it. Happen. Doesn't happen. So. Yeah, but no, I mean it was a, a once in a lifetime for me experience. It was on my bucket list of, of yeah, um, you know, and Absolutely it was just um, a helicopter as well. And I thought, just wow. And um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity because I absolutely love that. And I want to go back and do a bit more. Actually, <laughs> you always do. <laughs> you, you do, you do, do, you do. All right. And it's not, it's not all. It's not all about the kill. That's the thing. Is you know, why do we do it? We, we get out there and we experience different things. I've bored countries. so many people about this. And I'm really sorry that I've bored people on YouTube about it because it was really uh, my best trip last Good. year. Thank well you. Done, mate. All right. <laughs>